let me introduce you to the world of Kemet. In the mythic age of ancient Egypt, the powerful gods throw their troops into epic battles to demonstrate their power. In the desert or at the feet of gigantic temples, they use their many powers to support their troops, summon and control mythological creatures, and gain the upper hand. Each round is split between a day and a night phase. As soon as a player has reached 8 victory points at the end of the day phase, they are declared the winner. You will notice that the board has two different sides, and the side that you choose is determined by the number of players that you have in your game. The Nile River runs straight through the board. In a two or three player game, the East Bank is inaccessible. Here I have set up a three player game. Each player is designated a city to occupy. Each city is split up into three districts, where each district has room for a pyramid and is surrounded by a wall. If we take a look at the map, you will notice other structures. These include temples, available to be controlled. In the event that you control a temple at the end of your turn, you will be rewarded with a temporary victory point. Desert spaces are outlined by these white lines, which also dictate the movement spaces. You will also notice obelisks, which we will come back to soon, as well as harbours providing safe passage across water. Let's return back to our cities. Each player is provided three pyramids, a blue, red and a white pyramid. These pyramids provide you access to power tiles available to purchase, based on the level of your pyramids. The red pyramid will provide you access to the red power tiles, which have power type of mainly attack and movement. Blue pyramids will provide access to the blue power tiles, with a power type of mainly defense and control. Lastly, white, providing access to the white power tiles, which focus around prayer and resources. These power tiles provide significant changes to each player's abilities and modify the rules of the game for its owner. You will notice that there are four levels of tiles to correspond with the four levels available on your pyramid. A level 2 blue pyramid will gain you access to level 1 and level 2 blue power tiles. Similarly, a level 4 white pyramid will gain you access to all four levels of white tiles. These tiles will also unlock powerful creatures for you to incorporate within your army. A full breakdown of what each of the power tiles do can be found on the reference guide provided with the game. I would also recommend downloading the reference guide from the Matago website for your phone or for your tablet, as the game only comes with one reference guide and as you could imagine is quite a hot commodity. I'll add the link to the reference guide in the description below. At the beginning of the game, you have the choice to allocate three points amongst your pyramids. Perhaps you choose to raise each of the pyramids to level 1, or focus on a specific colour and raising it to level 2, where the third pyramid would remain off the board until such time you raise its level from 0. This is your first strategic decision to make, even before the game has even begun. You will begin the game with 10 units, of which you may only have 5 at a time in a troop travelling together. They will start and respawn in a district of your city with a pyramid. Let's now take a look at our player board. Along the top is your prayer tracker. At the start, everyone starts off with five prayer points. This is your currency to perform many tasks throughout the game. Let's now take a look at available actions. Each player has five action tokens. In turn order, each player puts down one of their action tokens and immediately applies its effect. Here are your options. Action 1, Movement Phase. This allows you to move your troops from one space at a time via ground transportation, using a harbour crossing, or using teleportation by the power of the pyramids. For the cost of two prayer points, you can teleport your troop from one of your pyramids to any obelisk on the map. This includes directly into temples. You're able to move into other players' cities, however, as the cities are surrounded by walls, your troop must begin its movement from an adjacent space to a wall. That is to say, you aren't able to move and then enter an opponent's city in the same action. However, the walls of your city have no effect to you. That means you can move in and out of your city freely. Action number two, recruit. You have the ability to recruit new units from your reserve into one of your city districts for the cost of one prayer point per unit. Action number three, raise a pyramid. This action will allow you to increase the level of one of your pyramids. The prayer point cost is equal to the level the pyramid is being raised to. For example, to raise a pyramid from level 2 to 3, it costs 3 prayer points. To raise a pyramid from level 1 to 3, it will cost 5. 
In the event that you raise a pyramid to level 4, you earn a permanent victory point. Action number 4, Pray. When you use this action, simply gain two prayer points. Action number five, buy a power tile. Last but not least, purchase a power tile from the reserve. Ensure you have the applicable pyramid at or below the power tile level. Uh, you pay the purchase cost based on the power level of the tile. A couple of things to remember when allocating an action. Action spaces must be empty and by the end of the round, i.e. the five action tokens have been used, at least one action token must have been played on each of the levels of the pyramid. A few last things to discuss. Divine Intervention Cards. Each player starts off with one Divine Intervention Card. Playing these cards do not count as an action. They can be played either during a battle or in the night or day phase, as outlined on the card. There may be prayer point costs associated to playing the card indicated in the top left hand corner. A full breakdown of what each of the cards do can be found on the Power Tile Reference Guide. Let's take a look at how battle progresses. When a battle breaks out by one player entering a space with another player, each player chooses two of their six battle cards. One of the cards is automatically discarded. The other is used in the battle. The card is placed face down you may add Divine Intervention cards under your battle card at this time. The cards are revealed, and the winner is determined by adding together 1. The number of units in their troop 2. The strength value of the battle card 3. Any attack or defense bonuses from their power tiles 4. Bonuses given by creatures engaged in the battle and lastly 5. Bonuses from Divine Inter Intervention cards played. The player with the highest battle value wins the battle. In case of a tie, the defender always wins the battle. If you win as an attacker, you achieve a permanent victory point. Now we need to determine the casualties. These are determined by the damage and protection values on the battle card. Casualty is caused by the damage value played on both the battle card and on any divine intervention cards played, however are counteracted by your opponent's protection value. This process is applied to both sides of the battle. For the losing side, you have the option to either retreat your troops to an adjacent space of the winner's choosing, or recall your troops back to your reserve and receive a prayer point for each retreated troop. We are now ready to play. Here is a quick rundown of the turn phase. Starting off with the night phase, everyone earns an additional two prayer points, everyone receives a new divine intervention card, Night power effects are performed from your power tiles, and now we determine the new turn order. For the first round, turn order is randomly chosen. Future rounds, the player with the fewest victory points determines the turn order. Going on to the day phase, action tokens are carried out, performing an action in turn sequence until all action tokens have been depleted. This includes moving troops, powering up pyramids, purchasing power tiles, praying, recruiting new units, and battling it out with your opponents. Finally, the attribution of permanent victory points and prayer points. The question is, how do we gain victory points throughout the game? Well, to gain a permanent victory point, these can be achieved by attacking and winning battles, obtained through purchasing specific power tiles, controlling the Sphinx power tile, controlling two temples at the end of a day phase, or in a three or five player game, sacrificing two units in the Sanctuary of the All Gods. To gain temporary victory points, you can raise one of your pyramids to level four, or simply controlling temples. The reason why these are considered temporary victory points is because an opponent can turn the tide and can take control of your temples, or even your level four pyramid within your city districts. So let's talk about some strategy ideas that we can implement as we play through this phenomenal game that I have laid out here on the table. Um, first and foremost, this game heavily promotes uh, attacking. Um, in a lot of these type of move and attack games, if we think about Risk or some of the other alternatives, you know, there's, a, there's those type of players that tend to hold back uh, on their defense lines and you know, incrementally, slowly, um, uh, you know, work towards their opponents in order to attack them. In Kemet, that doesn't happen at all. You know, with the ability to 
you know, use your pyramids to teleport to any obelisk on the board. It really promotes, okay, so I'm gonna go from here, I'm gonna jump, take my troops straight into this temple, attack my opponent here, take control of that temple, and bam, just like that. On the very first move, you could very much well be attacking. Um, bearing in mind, when you do win as an attacker in a battle, you do get that all important permanent victory point. If we take a look at the victory points real quick, I didn't really discuss this too much in, in too detail in the actual video. The temporary victory points are those that are uh, those those victory points that you get when you take over a um, a temple, or if you manage to increase your one of your pyramids to level four, you notice that they're circular in shape. So that indicates that they are temporary victory points. The permanent ones uh, are all square based. So the red one obviously being if you manage to win a battle when you're the attacker, you would earn one of these permanent victory points that can never be taken away from you. In the event that you do lose a battle and there are casualties, I would highly recommend, as opposed to taking the option of of uh, retreating your your troop to an adjacent space of your opponent's choosing, may I add, I would definitely re re always recommend recalling those troops, only because if you only have a few left over in your troop, what it means is you know there's a great opportunity that a neighboring opponent can just come into that space, attack you, and then with a high probability, you know, uh, uh, win as well, which will only net them again another permanent uh, battle victory point, and it really doesn't serve you much at all. Whereas if you were to recall it back to your reserves, what it means is that you will generate an additional vic uh, a, an additional prayer point for each of those those troops, which remembering when we use the recruit action, it only costs one prayer point to then take that uh, that troop in your reserve back onto the board into your city. Uh, so highly recommend recalling back to your reserves and then recruiting straight away. If we take a look at the map here, there is this very important uh, Nile Delta section up the top here with the Sanctuary of the All Gods and this temple up here. You will notice that well, obviously we can recall, uh, beg your pardon, we can teleport into either of the Sanctuary of the All Gods or into this temple we're using the Obelisk. But bearing in mind with this area, apart from this little harbour here between uh, this little space and this temple, you can't escape this area. It's a uh, you know, you can enter it, but it's, it's very difficult to get back out of. The only way you can actually get yourself out of the delta is there is a tile, uh, I think it's in the blue section, where it actually enables you to uh, teleport from an obelisk as well. Uh, so typically within the game, you can only teleport from one of your pyramids, but with the use of the additional tile, uh, it'll let, enable you to then as well teleport from obelisks as well, which is very handy, especially if you're trying to uh, maneuver or get around the, uh, the board quickly. In, in saying that though, I would uh, never neglect this area up here. It is very, it's typically a very strategic place to be. Now if we look at the uh, the results of, of controlling either of these temples, so with the Sanctuary of All Gods, you actually earn, if you control this at the end of a day phase, you actually earn a, a permanent victory point uh, if you sacrifice to your troops here, uh, two of your units, beg your pardon. And uh, this temple up here, uh, at the end, if you manage to control it, Obviously, you gain the uh, the the, uh, the temporary victory point, um, but in saying that, if you uh, if you remove one of your units from this section, you would actually gain five prayer points at the beginning of the next phase, uh, day phase, as opposed to, to the typical three or two prayer points that we see in the other temples on the board. There is a power tile in here. I, I believe it might be in the uh, the red section that actually enables you to. Uh, have uh, up to seven troops. Oh, here we go. Sorry, it's in the blue tile, uh, blue pile here. Oops, this power tile here. Hopefully, it's in focus. But what this power tile gives you is enables you to increase your troop size from five to seven. So if you manage to, I, I like to get, uh, obtain this tile very early on in the game. Uh, increase my troop size to seven. Take possession of the uh, sanctuary of the all gods or this temple here and you know with a creature whether it's the elephant or something with a bit of defense no one's going to even want to touch you up here because you have such a large troop size with the creature and every time you're just losing two units uh and you know gaining a victory point each turn it's it's uh, very lucrative 
Talking about the creatures, I uh, highly recommend the creatures. They add great mobility, they add great, uh, greater defense, greater attack power, obviously. Uh, some actually give a, a, a permanent victory point. Um, the most interesting one, I think, is the snake or serpent, I guess, where what it means is, in addition to providing one space that you can move on ground transportation so you can move two spaces as opposed to the one it also means that when it, uh, when this snake is part of your troop in battle and there is another creature on the opponent's team or the opponent's troop uh, it negates any other creature that it's in battle with <laughs> so if you're noticing that your other opponents are you know taking up a lot of the other creatures maybe the the snake or the serpent is an option to kind of counteract any other creatures that may come into battle with you throughout the game with the different power tiles that you have available to you, there's just so many variations on different strategies that you can try out and, and develop along the way. Uh, you know, obviously at the beginning of the game, you do have that choice as to how you want to distribute those three points within your pyramids. Uh, typically, I always like to have at least one point in my white power tile so I can kind of gain access to some of the early tiles that reduce the cost of purchasing future tiles or give an additional prayer point at any time that you use the, uh, the prey uh, action on your board. Um, I've tried both ways of you know building up defense or having a more of a, an attack pro uh, 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 plan, um, and they're all just a lot of fun to play around with. You know, trying to find those those sweet spots when it comes to combining some of the tiles to create really great combos. I guess I absolutely love this game. Um, without giving away any spoilers, if you haven't seen my previous uh, video on the top five games that I own. Uh, obviously this game does form part of that video. I highly recommend checking that video out to see exactly where it uh, lies within my top five currently. Uh, the game just looks fantastic on the board laid out. So much fun, so engaging because you're, you're constantly, you know, moving around the board so quickly, you know, trying to take those temples, trying to gain those permanent victory points. And obviously with the temporary victory points, uh, you know, anything can change, you know, very, very quickly. Remembering as well one other thing I want to add when you do manage to raise a pyramid to level four You obviously gain your your temporary victory point, but at the same point, you know Any of your opponents can just jump into your district uh, over the walls and uh, take ownership of that pyramid If you're not not necessarily defending your city uh, to an extent as well uh, So the game can just change so very very quickly Highly recommend checking this one out guys uh, it's currently ranked uh, number 70 on BoardGameGeek.com, has a rating of 7.8. Um, I did find a, a really solid, um, greatly detailed forum post on BoardGameGeek that really gives some great detail on power tile combos that I will link in the, in the description below. Uh, the reference guide, like I mentioned in the video, you know, get it for your phone, get it for your, uh, your uh, tablet. It's a handy item to have as you play through the game, so you can kind of see what each of the power tiles do. In addition, it gives details on the divine intervention cards when they're played. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Please uh, subscribe, uh, like this video, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.